Tide Talk Web is back again. What is up, my fellow Tideettes and Titers? Hey, uh, anyway, a cool story I saw recently this week was Bo Scarborough has another word for the Alabama running back competition. Well, as we all know, there's like five running backs deep. They've all, most of them have all played last year. We had that issue with Bo Scarborough. We broke his leg. He's coming back from that in the national title, national title game, uh, which if we had another big back, we probably wouldn't have lost that game. Or if he hadn't gone out, we wouldn't have lost the game. I don't care what Drake or Patrick said about out, saving getting out coached. It wasn't getting out coached. We couldn't extend plays in the third and fourth to drain the clock. That was the only thing that changed the game. But anyway, uh, he says um, they have a creation, a creative competition, and it's it's really good. He said because it fuels everybody's passion. And he's talking about, I mean, it's about helping each other out, showing them the ropes, and learning from each other. Even though uh, we're the oldest guy, there's something we can take from the younger guys and we can put into perspective. That's how you make creation for his competition because he called it creation instead of competition. Uh, Brian Dable said there could be uh, five roles for five running backs as well. Uh, the depth is important with running back group given the recent issue uh, with depth last year, you know, as we all saw in the national championship game. But I won't go there because that's a sore spot for me, as you all know. Uh, but anyway, he's talking about uh, the guys are very hungry and they're hungry for each other. So if, if you blow it up one day, they're rooting you and pushing you on. Or if Bo blows it up one day, they're rooting for him. And he says on and on and on, and it says that it makes us better and better and better. Some quick notes of Alabama Tide's six camp practice. Uh, my boy, Vendarius Cowan, again, black jersey. Don't know why. I've been trying to find that out. First team offensive line configuration. We got Ross Williams at left tackle, uh, Ross Pitcher Advisor at left guard, Bradley Bozeman at center, and Lester Cotton at right guard, and Matt Womack at right tackle. Also, we've got Calvin Ridley led the outside receiver line. He was followed by Derek Keefe and Devonta Smith. Robert Foster, who I talked about in my last video, he led the outside receiver line, followed by Jerry Judy at second. Jerry Judy's going to be a breakout guy along with uh, Robert Foster this year. Tyrell Shavers was third. Cam Sims was the first in the slot receiver, followed by Xavier Marks, Henry Ruggs, and Chandarius Townsend. Don't sleep on Townsend and don't sleep on uh, Henry Ruggs at all. All right. Who's got the best running back tandem in the SEC? Old Miss. Huh? They're number 14. Uh, like I said, they have not had a 1,000-yard rusher since, uh, what is his face? Oh, yeah, Dexter McCluster in 09. So, yeah, they're number 14. Uh, like I said, they have Jordan Wilkins. He was supposed to be the lead back this coming year. He's academically eligible. You had uh, Eugene Brasley. He had 61 carries, 200 yards, two TDs. Then back up to him, you got Devon Pennyman. He had 20 carries, 58 yards, and a TD. Like I said, the last time they had a 1,000-yard back was under Houston. I got a nut. So that tells you anything. Sucks. Gamecocks. They were last in the SEC. 3.8 yards a carry. They're number 13 on my list. Like I said, nothing to brag home about. But uh, Rico Dowdy had 133 carries for 760 yards and six touchdowns. Tyson Williams is a transfer from North Carolina. He sat out last year. They're hoping he can be a big thing for them. A.J. Turner had 116 carries, 400 yards plus yards with three touchdowns. Uh, South Carolina only had a thousand, has only had two 1,000 yard rushers since 01. So, yeah, you can go ahead and snooze on those guys. Arkansas, they've got them at number 12. Um, I don't know why on this list, why they're so low, because they always have big-time rushers that get 1,000 yards. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like I said, uh, Raleigh Williams had the neck injury. He's out. We talked about him in the past. Um, Devon Whaley had 110 carries, 600 yards, three TDs. He's going to be the man. He's going to be 1,000-yard rushers. You can take that to the bank this year. He had David Williams. He had 56 carries, 239 yards, three TDs. Uh, Malik Williams, freshman, doesn't matter, has no, no stats. Got to remember, though, under Brett Bielema, they've always had a 1,000-yard rusher under him, so he will have those good backs. Tennessee is kind of where we thought they were going to be. Alvin Kamara and Jalen Hurd went to the NFL. They were studs. The projected backs are Kelly. He had 98 yards for 600, 98 carries for 600 yards, five touchdowns. 
Uh, Phil's Ames had 14 carries, 58 yards, two touchdowns. Ty Chandler, freshman, has nothing. Interesting fact, though, Tennessee failed to produce a thousand yard rusher last year, and the last time they did it, or the last time Tennessee failed to produce a thousand yard rusher in three straight seasons, was in 1980, 81, and 82. So that's kind of a drop off for them. Mint the tippy tape! Mint the tippy tape! Number 10. Uh, Aris Williams is reliable, he's a pretty good back, but uh, they're more of a throwing team. They don't have a great offensive line, so if you don't have a great line, you can't put together a great running team. Sorry. It just doesn't happen. Uh, Aris Williams is their top back. He had 137 carries last year for 720 yards, which is great numbers, with four TDs. Sophomore Nick Gibson, nine carries, 57 yards. Franklin Hill, he's a freshman, nothing. Interesting fact, though, uh, they're more of a throwing team. I think they have the best quarterback uh, coming back in uh, to the SEC this coming year. Number nine, Flo Rida. We at it. We up in it. So, uh... Uh, it says, if we're not losing other teams and talent, it would be hard to argue Florida, which was last in the SEC in rushing yards per game at 128. But Jordan Scarlett had 179 carries for 889 yards and six TDs. So he's putting up pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good yards. Uh, Perron had 91 carries uh, for 400 and something yards and one TD. Mark Thompson, 68 carries, 290 yard yards with two TDs. Interesting fact, though, Scarlett averaged 3.7 yards after contact per attempt last season, which ranks number two among draft eligible SEC running backs with at least 150 carries. I expect the running will get better. Like I said, uh, McIlwain will make them better. It'll happen. Just wait. You'll see it. Number eight, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. It's hard to replace Boone Williams of Kentucky, but Snell Jr. had 186 uh, carries for 1,000 yards and 13 TDs, which is pretty good. He's coming back. Uh, Shema King had 11 carries, 81 yards, and a TD. Uh, Kentucky was the only SEC team with two 1,000-yard rushers. So be looking for them. I think they're a little low in this list, but we'll see where it goes. Mizzou, uh, they're not too great. Like I said, they do have more of a, a throw-based offense. Like I said, sophomore Crockett's going to be leading them. Last year, he had 153 carries for 1,000 yards, which is quite impressive with not a lot of carries, and 10 TDs. Uh, his backup had 162 carries, uh, which is more than he had. Had 750 yards and six TDs. Nate Strong had 32 carries for 137 yards and two TDs. They actually put up very impressive numbers, I have to admit, like really good numbers. So uh, Crockett set a Mizzou freshman record, rushing record. And uh, like I said, that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I think that they'll have a pretty good rushing offense this year. I don't know how, how the hell Vandy got number six. Like, really? We know Ralph Webb is good, but he's all they got. He carried 250 carries last year for 1,200 yards and 13 TDs. His backup only had 92 carries and a TD. So they're pretty much hanging the ball after him almost like 50 times a game, it seems like, because they have no other, other back. They have no other – they can't pass. We all know they suck at passing. So he's the only returning uh, SEC running back with 1,000 yards this season. Um I'm sorry, back-to-back -back 1,000 yards. So, yeah, that says something. Texas A&M at number five. Uh, Trayvon Williams burst on the scene last year as a freshman. Had really good numbers. Last year he had 156 carries for 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns, which is really good for not having that many carries. Keith Ford had 126 carries for 600 yards and six TDs, and Busby had 20 carries for 172 yards. Interesting fact. Williams was the first true freshman in school history to rush for more than 1,000 yards in a season. So hats off to that young man. He did great. Alabama, number four. We should have been higher on this. I don't understand that. Scarborough had 125 carries, 800 yards, 11 TDs. Harris had 146 carries for 1,000 yards and two touchdowns. Jacobs had 85 carries for 165 yards with four touchdowns. We had a very fast and mobile quarterback who accounted for a lot of yards on the ground. So that's probably why we don't have a 1,000-yard rusher. Obviously. So, uh, how the hell did Auburn get ahead of us? I don't know, because Auburn sucks. Uh, Cameron Petway had 200 uh, carries for 1,000 yards, 7 TDs. Kieran Johnson had 182 carries for 800 yards and 11 TDs. Malik Miller had 16 carries, 69 yards, and a touchdown before a season-ending knee injury. Auburn is, interesting fact, Auburn is 5-0 and when games when Petway rushes for more than 150 yards. Well, no shit. You rushed for 150 yards. When hell, you couldn't throw last year. 
Nobody could catch a cold on that team, so what do you expect? Georgia is number two. I think they should have been number one because uh, you got Nick Chubb coming back. He had 200-plus carries for 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Sony Michelle had 150-plus carries for 800 yards, four TDs. Brian Heron had 63 carries, 300 yards, and three TDs, which is great. They're going to blow it up this year. They don't have a great offensive line, so that's probably why they didn't get more yards. I think they should be number one on this list. And number one's going to shock you, LSU. How the hell did LSU get number one on this list? Okay, Darius Geis last year had 180 carries, 1,000 yards, and 15 touchdowns. Well, hell, they were handing the ball off every time. They didn't have a quarterback. I mean, what do you expect? I mean, they just, let's keep running at it. They, they use the old, the old uh, Mike Shula thing. What are we going to do? Let's run up the middle. Well, when you hand off the ball 85 times a game, you're going to have a lot of yards. Darren Williams had 52 carries for 200 yards and three TDs. Geis is interesting fact. Geis, uh, for every 12.9 carries, went for 15 plus, plus yards. Uh, for every 32.8%, went for first downs or touchdowns. Great numbers, but this ding-dong was the one that went to media day saying, Bama's afraid. They, you know, they were afraid to, they were afraid to play us both years, man. Afraid. Uh, well, they, well, they stacked the line. When we played, they were afraid of our run. No, you dummy. That's called, that's called game planning. If somebody's going to run, I don't know, 85 times a game or 90 times a game, you're going to stop the run. But anyway, I don't know who the hell picked that list. But anyway, Tide Talk Web, I'm out.